I'm starting to get some scared sounding DMs from composers and sound designers from all over the world lately. These people who are reaching out aren't worried about getting a job or worried about how to create some specific sound. They're frightened of something far, far more sinister. These people are worried about artificial intelligence. AI has already started to change the world. From ChatGPT being able to do students' homework, Spotify making an AI DJ, all the way to completely automated music mastering tools being made, composers and sound designers are worried that they're going to be the ones who get replaced next. So in this video, I'm going to go over how AI is going to change our work in game audio and how we can survive the shift that's going to be happening over the next little while. But as a caveat, I'm no fortune teller. I've just been keeping a close eye on AI and watching how it's affecting various industries. A big technological shift like this is similar to things like the steam engine, electricity, the internet, and so many others. Whole industries were radically altered when these technologies came out, and the same is gonna be true as AI improves. While most people are all doom and gloom about AI, I hope this video serves more as a guide than another sensationalistic doomer video. Now, the first thing to think about AI is how it's going to drastically increase our output. AI tools like ChatGPT have already helped writers and coders completely solve blank page syndrome. With tools like these, people can generate hundreds of ideas, essays, and blocks of code in mere seconds. While most of what AI generates right now now is at best adequate, it certainly gives people a starting point and that generation is only going to improve over time. Considering most of our work as creatives involves just staring at the screen, wondering what the hell we're gonna do next, cutting out some of that process is gonna save loads of effort. As we begin to speed up this initial sketching phase, we're gonna be able to get to a final result much easier and much quicker. And yes, even though I just mentioned text and code, we're already getting AI tools that generate sound and music as well. Is it good? No, not really. Here's an example of a music generating AI that is making music based off of a text prompt. Not great, but it definitely at least sounds like music. And here's an example of an audio research experiment called Audio LDM generating a sound based on a text prompt. Obviously, that's not great, but it's just gonna get better over time. And as things get better, these audio-based AI tools are gonna be incredibly useful to generate ideas with. On the sound design side, we even have very basic AIs that allow you to feed a sound library to it. It then takes that sound library and aligns it to a piece of linear media appropriately, putting the right sounds in the right places. It does this automatically, much like a Foley artist or sound editor would. Now, again, it doesn't do a terribly good job because it's extremely early days for all of this sort of stuff. But if AI ever gets to the point where it can auto-align footstep sounds in a linear project, then it might make film work tolerable. So as all these tools develop further and further, our work is gonna get faster and faster. And some parts of it will even be completely automated eventually. And this is where so many people get terrified. It's easy to think that these are the end times of our careers. If AI can just generate work from scratch, what's stopping it from completely replacing us tomorrow? Well, here's the thing. Even with all of these generative superpowers, AI can only do so much on its own. Let's take an example using an AI-powered DAW called TuneFlow. In an instant, I can choose a general style and tempo and have it generate music immediately right within a browser. And we can see in here here that it generates a basic piano track. Then I can take some of the other tools within TuneFlow and add a harmony and a basic beat underneath it. It's not amazing, but for something completely automated, it works well enough. And while this music is by no means earth shatteringly great, it may inspire me to make something great out of it. But if I didn't have any expertise in music or sound, I wouldn't even be able to take this track and make it any better. I'd just have to stop here and not be able to improve on it at all. To make this something original and useful and something that people would like, an actual composer would need to get their hands on it. So while yes, AI will make people's work faster and easier and even some parts of it completely automated, 
it'll still work best alongside people who have actual skills. But this increased output has a bit of a dark side to it. Because over time, the expectation that we can create more work faster will become normalized. That happens basically every time that there's a technological jump. Way back in the vinyl days, for example, it'd be damn near impossible to write, record, edit, mix, master, and then distribute an album all over the world within 24 hours. Nowadays, that's totally doable. Maybe not advisable, but doable. Practically anyone watching this video can put out an entire album of entirely new music right after watching this. In a lot of ways, making music nowadays is easier than it was 100 years ago. So the expectation for musicians has increased over time. So as these AI tools get better and improve our ability to work, our expectations are gonna grow as well. It's looking like the composers and sound designers who end up using these AI-based tools are going to be able to create a lot more work a lot faster than those who don't. So over time, the higher and higher end clients are going to be demanding more and more work and will be working with the people who have these AI buddies on their side as opposed to the people who don't. And there's also the question of the people who can't access the technology and accessibility in general. I don't know if people will have access to all the same AI-based tools as one another without necessarily needing to pay for them. Though I feel like people are going to try and make a profit wherever they can. And as any new technology gets introduced into any new field, the rifts get bigger and bigger. I personally don't like this because my aim is to break as many people into the industry as possible. But for now, as long as we're in this area of AI-based tools not being terribly great for game audio, we don't have a ton to worry about. But it is something to think about for the future. But as these sorts of tools do get better, the differences in the work culture are going to become apparent. For example, as audio-based AI tools get better, it's going to become harder and harder to find entry-based work in game audio, film audio, or anything like that. Many of you already know that it's near impossible to find entry-level game audio work, and there's actually a really good reason for that, but it's beyond the scope of this video. But as AI tools become easier to use, developers and directors of lower-budget projects are going to opt for those tools as opposed to hiring a composer and sound designer. After all, if AI is cheaper and faster and does a good enough job, people are going to opt for that instead of hiring a composer or sound designer who may end up flaking on them that costs much more. But note how I said that AI would do just a good enough job. At the moment, AI doesn't ask you any real questions. Or at the very least, it doesn't try to understand what a client's needs are. It doesn't really necessarily even care. It just takes your prompts and poops something out. And sometimes the poop is all right, and sometimes it's just poop. And yes, there will always be clients who want something that's good enough for as cheap as humanly possible. And I dare say that's the overwhelming majority of people out there. And AI is going to serve those clients very, very well. But our job is to find and work with our ideal clients. We want to work with the people who actually care about making the best thing that they can. And there are good clients at every tier from the beginning phases all the way to the advanced levels. And there are bad clients all along those tiers as well. But now more than ever, you have to learn your core audio skills, grow your network, and actually be able to negotiate, run a business, and actually earn a great income. Very few people bother to actually learn and do these things, so of course the high-end clients ignore most people in these fields. And as these tools get better and better and easier and easier to use, it's up to us to keep bettering ourselves. Both so that we can take advantage of these tools and also so that we don't get lumped in with every other generic composer and sound designer or AI-based tool that exists. But to start separating yourself from the pack, I recommend you study a concept called positioning. Positioning is essentially how people perceive you, your work, and your brand. Every single business is positioned in some way, shape, or form. And I recommend you start reading the work of a guy named Blair Ends to start getting a good grasp of what positioning is. But for example, we all know that Ferrari is a luxury brand. We all know it's expensive. It's positioned to be perceived as such. The same goes for brands like Gucci, Apple, Paul Reed Smith guitars, and countless others. In our day-to-day, -day, we tend to pick and buy certain things based on their positioning. In some cases, we want the cheaper thing, and in other times, we want the nicer one. For example, maybe we drink tea, and some of us just want whatever tea we can get our hands on. And other people might want organic, free-range, loose-leaf tea that's sung to by a cavalcade of monks before being shipped to you. We as individuals also have positioning 
listening as well. We instinctively know that John Williams is probably not going to work on a student film for $40. He's positioned in such a way that he's perceived to be and is at the top of his field. While we don't need to get to that level to make a great income by any means, it would be wise to start skewing more towards the organic loose leaf tea route as opposed to being someone who's more generic and that just blends in with everything else. And here's the thing, a lot of people tend to think, well, I don't like fancy things, I don't need anything fancy, screw that stuff, I don't want to deal with it. But every market has people who want the custom high-end thing that's made just for them. I doubt you as an artist want to be considered to be the cheap generic throwaway option that people can just get rid of and replace easily. So it would be silly to hate on all the custom fancy stuff that's out there when we ourselves want to be considered as such for our clients. When we cater to a more custom and more niche experience, clients flock to us because there are very few people in game audio or in any artistic field who are bothering to think of their career like this. The point of positioning is to directly not to appeal to everyone. Not everyone wants, needs, or even cares about loose leaf tea, and that's totally fine. Our goal is not to get every client, but the right clients. And when we start positioning and niching down, we start to actually get way more work because those clients are desperate to find people who are well positioned. And there's an infinite number of opportunities for people who bother to do this. Most people are just trying to price themselves low and work for everyone under any circumstance. Those are the people who are gonna get replaced by AI the soonest. But the people who are more specific in what they do are always gonna be more appealing to the best clients. So as AI AI does improve and becomes a bigger and bigger part of our lives and our careers, we need to make sure that we're positioned in such a way where we understand what our clients' needs are so that we can keep delivering what their vision is for the art that they're creating. If we can do that, then AI is just going to be a tool that we use to enhance our work, as opposed to something that's going to replace us completely. Ultimately, I think we'll be fine, at least for the foreseeable future. Sure, there may be a day where AI understands the client's needs far better than we ever could, but that day probably isn't coming super soon. Still, if we want to avoid being replaced right away, we want to become some fine organic loose leaf tea instead of the generic crappy stuff. And some of you may have realized that the tips I've outlined here are ultimately ideas on how to run a business. These are the things that a lot of people in game audio love to ignore and some even say are completely pointless to a career. The thing is, they are always a requirement to work in any artistic field and they're just more important than ever right now. So be sure to learn these skills and learn to position yourself, or let the robotic overlords replace you.